Sophie has introduced, a new Duan hat tip, Alicia Navoyi, and available on Amazon. It's a sequence of 84 short poems. I will show you the first poem so you can see the structure. Yeah. Um, all the poems are the same, two couplets. Each line has eight beats and is stepped in the middle. I gaze upon and gaze upon his guzzles, and it seems as though I have been reading roses or the rose of tiles, the I, the O, under a glaze in turquoise cursive or in damask buds, the ink of which has that strong odour that a poem has when poets think. When I first had the idea for the sequence, the title was going to be A Mystical Conversation with Alicia Navoyi. I thought that each poem would respond to a poem of his and it would be a profound mystical dialogue. So what went wrong? The first thing was that there are very few translations of uh, his poems, so I was short of material. The second thing though is just how inspiring Uzbekistan is. So a lot of the poems are about my impressions of the country um, and the culture. Second. I, um, as Sophie mentioned, hang on. <laughs> Slight technical hitch, there we go. Um, I went there exactly a year ago today, I mean, incredible timing really. And this uh, photo I took on my first day in Uzbekistan, my first day in Tashkent at the Alisher Navoy Literary Museum. So I went there on my very first day, which is dedication, I think. Um, so the third thing about what changed the collection was that a week after I got back, the uh, Uzbekistan shut its airspace and the lockdown started worldwide. My intention was to write a few poems after that trip, then another trip, write some more, then maybe another trip, write some more. Um, but that wasn't possible. Um, but fortunately, I, I wrote the sequence much quicker than I expected. I found a lot more ideas for poems in that one, two, two and a half week trip than I ever expected to. So in the end, about a quarter of the poems are either directly about Navoyi or in response to his poems. But for the rest, he was still a presiding inspiration for the tone, for the motifs and the images that I used. Um, in his poems, he... <laughs> for some reason, I'm having a problem. There we go. Moving along from one photo to the next. Um, in his poems, he likes to play with the, the word Navo, which is his, his, his root of his pen name, and which means melody. So I wrote about a, po a poem about him that plays with a few Nav and Nov words in English. A navigator of a newly metered idiom he has no match in. This is Navoyi, as much an innovator as an institution that is even in a spec novel now as unavoidable as when a novice dabbed a nib to know. And it's worth emphasizing that Navoy is such a traditional figure now because he broke with tradition and did something new. Poets were supposed to write in Persian, but he wrote in Chagatai instead. Um, also in, there we go, uh, in um, Tashkent, I visited his metro station why isn't there a Shakespeare station on the London Underground? Who knows? Anyway, this is a poem about Navoy's own personal metro station. The station that is Navoy's in Tashkent's metro, scenes from his poems in panels, the trains swish by like pages turning, is a temple to him, as serene as any station can be, with its wonderful white domes, that have cut stems in an enameled swathe. A lot of the poems of his that I read are about the agonies of love, 
I'm too old for that sort of thing. So I didn't find much inspiration there. But there are a few poems on the subject, including this rather crisp one. The beating or the beating up that happens with a lover's heart is none of a beloved's business. It is hurt by its own hurt. And if it is a metaphor of mystical abandonment, a blockage in the organ of beholding must be what is meant. That leads us to the other aspect of his love poems. Are they really spiritual poems about separation from the divine beloved? I took ideas from his poems and imagined them in terms either of spiritual experience or of the experience of poetry. This one is about spiritual experience. This light is like a laying of the lips of lilacs on the eyelids. It is like a lens that has the essence of them on the iris. It is like a latent April tip of them inside the pupil and the reflex that reflects it is the eyes enlightened dew. On the last day of my trip, um, back in Tashkent, I went to Sophie's favorite museum, which is the Museum of Applied Arts. And you can see why it's her favorite. I mean, it's amazing. There was some sort of talk or presentation in the main hall. And I chatted to three young dancers in traditional costume who were waiting in the corridor to perform. They sent me into the hall so I could watch their dance. Uh, just to conclude, what makes Uzbekistan for me so inspiring and so beautiful is that the spirit of Navoyi and the artistry of the past are very much alive today in the arts and crafts and in the hearts and souls of the people. The three young dancers waiting in a calm museum corridor to illustrate an item summoned me to watch them through that door. The tendrils of their arms in silk are similes by Navoyi. Spring smiles are stuck to as a vow is, and I am an Avoyi. Thank you very much.